people who met your son? Um, he was given two months to live. He had um, a melanoma removed from his back and it had spread. And um, it had spread into his lungs and his liver. And uh, he came to John absolutely desperate. There was no other answer for him. And God healed the tumour, the first tumour on his back started going down. And um, John, the first pray, prayer that he prayed, a general prayer over everybody, the tumour shrank. And then he just got better and better at each meeting he came to. And finally, he was totally healed. Yes. And tell us about lymph nodes. He had 27 lymph nodes removed during the surgery. And his body was just swollen up um, of fluid. And uh, he was like wearing what's called skins, that sort of tight um, uh, clothing to stop that swelling. And um, when he'd been at the meeting and he realised that the Lord had healed the tumour on his back, he fit in an act of faith and decided when he went back in the plane that he should take the skins off and not wear them again. And, um, and he's never had another problem. All the swelling went down and he's never ever had another problem with fluid building up again. That's about what? July last year. July last year. Yeah. 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 That's a long time. Yeah. What about his muscle on his back? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. yeah. the muscle. He had the muscle removed from his back with melanoma it was quite a big chunk of muscle. Yeah, and, yeah. and his um, left back yeah. uh, by his shoulder blade. And he hadn't been able to do heavy duties at work anymore because he couldn't lift his ladders. But when he had, immediately when he came back from that meeting, he went back to work and he was able to do all the normal things. Oh, he could pick his ladders up, he actually could do chin ups and things. Wow. And God wow. restored him. And also, Craig, Craig was the fa father, of, he's father of small children. And was his wife pregnant at the time? <laughs> he's, had, he's had another baby since. So wow. Three week oh. boys. Yeah. Wow. Now, you can think about these are people, you think, know, give months to live. Yeah. Yeah. And they hear that Jesus heals. Yeah. He actually flew to Launceston in Australia, didn't he, from Nelson? Yes. Uh, yeah, we're talking about great, like, like that lady who escaped from the hospital. <laughs> Karen. Karen. We're talking about the sort of biblical desperate faith yeah. yes. where there's no other way out. Yes, that's right. If God hasn't come through, we're finished. Yeah. You know, God honours his desperate faith. Some yeah. people will treat God like, oh, well, we'll go and see what happens, sit back. Oh, well, we're going to do it, don't do that. Oh, yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't we'll live with it. Some people have got this laissez-faire, this relax, oh yeah, but yeah, the doctor still hear you like that. But there's something about this desperate faith. Yes. Now, 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 what did Dr. say when they examined him after the miracle? I just can't believe what's happened. <laughs> they kept telling him he needed to come back and, you know, have all these scans done, but Greg's decided he, he doesn't need these scans, he doesn't want to be anywhere near a hospital. Because, because, he's got, because the tumours are gone, yes. and he's up with the bandages, the swelling's gone, and he's doing chin-ups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's, he's changed. He's a different man than he was before. Wow. How? In what way? He was quite sort of shy, and um, and if he even got up to speak, he found it quite difficult. But he's actually he's been sharing the gospel with absolutely everybody. He yeah. meets on the Nelson streets now. You walk, you walk down Nelson Street, and you had something wrong with you. He'll stop. He'll share yeah. his testimony, and he'll pray. I don't wow. know how many people yeah. he's done that. What these well, it's got an amazing reputation in the city. Well, isn't that exciting? Come on, Sue. Yeah. When, when her son got healed that weekend, there's another guy who's given a couple of months to live called Jeffrey. He had, he had two tumours, at risk of tumours in his liver, he had tumours in his spine, his bladder, and doctors wanted to book him in a palliative care. And you know what he did? He decided to come for one of our meetings. And God healed him. And so, and so he was testifying, and the doctor couldn't find any sign of cancer in Jeffrey. And he was testifying the very day the sun turned up at the same weekend. You can understand if you're dying and sick, yeah. and doctors say there's no hope, and you hear someone say, yeah. I had too much to live, and Jesus healed me, the doctors can't prove one of the tumors. Who knows? That does something to you. Yeah. Who knows? When, when someone gets healed from tinnitus, when someone gets healed from fibromyalgia, when someone gets healed from, from having a walking stick and spinal conditions, you know, you, you think, hang on. If they get healed, God can heal me. Yeah. You know, it builds faith in you. Yeah. Come on, it's power this. God bless you. Yeah. Give me a hand. He's the sick. He heals the lame. And he says you can heal them too in Jesus' name.